What's up summoners and welcome back to the episodes of the Korean builds. My name is Kirks and for this video our challenger analysts including me search up different high level one tricks in the Korean server and put together all the information about their builds. If that's not already enough for you and you want some more hands on advice as to how to pilot your champion or generally want to know more about League of Legends then don't shy away and check out our services over at proguides.com. Take a look around for free or move forward with a premium membership for the $7.99 which is built monthly. Check it out in the description below and find your perfect fit. But now let's take on our first build of the video. We are starting strong with a Draven build. You know this champion is a fear champion. Whenever it's locked in you already get that weird feeling in your stomach be it on your or the enemy team. To make sure that you provide it with the best possible build we looked it up for you and we are ready to share it with you. Many people believe that the mythic rush is still key for Draven but nothing like this could be further from the truth. Let's take a look at the full setup first. Essence Reaver, Berserker's Greaves, Bloodthirst, the Lord Dominic's regards Infinity Edge and the Prowler's Claw. With Lethal Tempo, Overheal, Legend Bloodline, Coup de Gras, Absolute Focus, Gathering Storm and one Attack Speed Shard, one Adaptive Shard and one Armor Shard. As your starter items you really want to have a Doran's Blade, a Potion and a Warding Trinket. Your ideal first reset consists of a Serrated Dirk and a Sheen or alternatively a Vampiric Zapter and a Sheen. Any of the combinations above will greatly enhance your laning power and will almost guarantee an easy kill as you get closer to that level. 6 mark. If you cannot get a kill earlier and lack a bit of gold towards a sheen, you're more than fine with just to serrate the Dirk or the Vampiric Zepter. Don't forget that even if you don't happen to cash in prior to your ult, you can still stack up and go for a clean kill upon hitting level 6. Essence Reaver grants you the best possible spike in the form of damage, convenience in the form of mana and transitioning into more crit. In the process of doing so, you obviously want to make sure to abuse the skirmish heavy nature of Draven and for that Bloodthirster is just too optimal. After that, you can choose between Lord Dominic's regards or Infinity Edge as you see fit and for your mythic Prowler's Claw can come in late without too many worries. You're not really dependent on an early mythic nor does it really stunt your power curve by purchasing it late, but you might miss out on some Pogger's Claw montage moments. Our next champion will have those moments with different type of claws. Nidalee has always been one of the most fun yet difficult to play champion there is. What items, what rune setup and specifically how to pilot this champion are big questions you'll have trouble finding answers to unless you talk to Hyalo one tricks. To bring you everything you need for the cat we broke down a Korean one tricks perspective on the champion. Let's talk about runes first and what you need to go for. Most of the time you can run a default setup of electrocute, sudden impact, eyeball collection, treasure hunter, transcendence and water walking. This will provide you with the most consistent and highest burst damage to assassinate pretty much anyone you can face. You may exchange electrocute for dark harvest but don't forget that dark harvest is a streaking rune. To get the most valuable value out of it you need to get multiple procs during a team fight. If you are certain that you're up for the task then it's obviously game for you. Alternatively you can look into a conquer variant of Nidalee. This is usually supposed to help you into bruisers and helps you deal with some crowd control alike as you're running conquer, triumph, legend tenacity, coup de gras, sudden impact and treasure hunter. For shards you'll run attack speed, adaptive force and armor. Before we hop into more specifics you need to know when it comes to Nidalee let's take a look at our full setup including items. Your full build is is going to consist of Sock Boots or Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Hackstack, Protobelt, Magi, Soul Stealer whenever you can, Shadow Flame or Void Stuff, Revenant's Death Cap and Zonia's Hourglass or Banshee's Veil. Now we gotta take a brief look at the jungle items we can choose from and why we want to do that. Don't go for the green jungle item as it provides you with pretty much nothing you really want. However, when it comes to blue and red, many people are confused which one you want so let's take a look at them and make it very very easy for you. Ask yourself if you want to or need to deal more damage in a short period period of time. If the answer is yes, like ganking bot lane, then by all means go red smite. If you need to be fast on the map and find consecutive plays in the form of invading, suffocating the enemy by bullying them all around the map, then blue smite is going to be your choice. Long story short, if you want to hurt badly, it's red and if you want to go fast, it's going to be blue. The next thing is mandatory to talk about. Nidalee features two big different approaches. Starting with Q into E and then W is a level 3 clear path that allows you to be fully functional at level 3. If you want to do a cheesy invade, let's say right into the enemy gromp, you can skill Q into W, hop the dragon wall and greet the enemy as he's busy dealing with the frog. For your first ideal reset, you want to buy either sorcerer's boots or Ionian boots of lucidity. Whichever you end up choosing in any scenario should be paired up with a dark seal. Magic soul stealer is one of the most broken items and you really want to get it whenever you can. Don't forget, Nidalee is a hyper aggressive snowball ability based jungler. As a consequence, you'll often find yourself with a bounty on your head 
and to protect that one, you need to alter your build path at times and invest into a stopwatch, which you can transform into Zonias a tiny bit later. Protecting your stacks and the shutdown are just too valuable for your champion. Our next champion in line has been avoiding nerfs ever since, and nobody really knows why. This champion is crazy strong and features way too much sustain. He also has quite a few options what items he can go into, but for this one, we are focusing on a lane dominant one with Comet. Before we check out the details, let's give you the rundown for the items first. Sorkel Lucidity Boots, Everfrost, Archangel Staff, Zonia's Hourglass, and then you have some choices. Do you want to provide more utility, or are you a big chunk of your team's AP damage? Let's say you're the only source of AP, then obviously you want Sorcerer's Boots and later complete your build with Void Staff and Rebel on Staff Cap. However, if you're not, you can look into more supportive options that turn you into a utility bot or a meat shield. Items such as Sunfire and Knight's Vow are solid options for this very instance. Let's provide you with some actionable advice early on. Start with Doran's Ring, two pots and a trinket. For your first reset, try to look for either Sork Boots or Lucidity Boots and maybe even a Tear of the Goddess. If you happen to get off a Cheetah Recall, you should most definitely get a Tear of the Goddess to get the scaling rolling early on. As for runes, take Comet, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Cookie Delivery and Cosmic Insight. Rune Shard wise, Double Adaptive and the Defensive Shard will provide you with everything you need. When it comes to laning, there are a few things you need to know that makes things a lot easier. Depending on your matchup, you can start with your body slam to abuse the enemy behind his own minions, maybe even invade with your jungle. If that doesn't sound too promising, and you're more of a passive laner or in a terrible matchup, you can start with Q to safely farm from range. Laning wise, your entire identity is centered around proccing Comet and Scorch as many times as possible by utilizing your innate sustain. As the laning progresses, you can slowly choke out the enemy's resources and force them to recall, commit big cooldowns such as teleport or just tie them to lane. Given the relative wave state, they might be forced into making hasty or bad decisions or require assistance by their team. You on the other hand are being fine strong or weak sided as your champion truly is disgusting to face. One of Riot's, excuse me, biggest abominations is Irelia and needless to say there are a few builds that people love to go for. In this very instance we are going to pick up one of Irel King's builds and break it down for you. Let's take a look at the full setup first. Later the Rune King, the Offensive Boots, God Drinker, Witsand, Frozen Heart, and Guardian Angel. For runes, it's Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Lead and Tenacity into Heavy Crowd Control, and otherwise just Alacrity paired with Last Stand. In his secondary tree, there's one major change and a smaller change. Against the most gruesome matchups, in which he desperately needs more sustain, you can default to Second Wind and Overgrowth, whereas on a more general note, you can go into the Inspiration tree. There you can pick Magical Footwear if you don't need the extra sustain and mana from Cookies, and Cosmic Insight. Otherwise, Cookies and Cosmic Insight are totally okay in most of your games. You'll be really happy about the extra mana as Aurelia is far more mana hungry than most people believe. Also, go for an attack speed, an adaptive and one defensive shard. For laning, we basically need to break down two major matchup types. Matchups in which you can play level 1 and matchups in which you cannot or should not. Against the latter, I recommend starting E and CS safely from range. The former will allow you to start with Q and actively look for fights. In both types, however, you can start looking for an all-in on level 2. Too. It all depends on the amount of stacks you have, as well as your accuracy with E. A typical trick most Aurelia players use is as old as time itself, but people often forget about it. First, try to learn about the minion execute values on your Q. Just mouse over the tooltip in-game and you'll get that done super easily. With that down, you're going to lower the HP of a caster minion whenever you have the chance to. The minion will be the gateway of reaching the enemy champion without losing your most vital cooldown, your dash. The enemy is now faced with one major issue. He cannot get close to set minion as it's a direct threat to his life. The next step is as typical as the one prior, but people really hate being patient. As you dash towards that minion and are now close to the enemy, make sure to cast your E's first instance. After that, don't just instantly cast again, use your body and auto attacks to apply pressure and put the enemy in a rough spot while you wait as long as possible for your E's second charge. In a perfect world, you might catch the enemy after their flash and worst case, you just be missing them. Whatever outcome, you don't really lose anything. As for your starter, you want a Doran's Blade with a potion and a trinket, and your first ideal reset basically grants you everything you need for Aurelia. All the memes about being full build are related to this one and it's the Vampiric Zapter. This item, paired with your Q's healing,
playing will make sure that you'll sustain through basically everything in the game. With that done, let's take a look at our last and probably most exotic build and unique champion, Elawi. This build is primarily used against ranged laners and has a special solution for mages. Let's start by looking at its runes first. You want fleet footwork, presence of mind, legend tenacity, a last stand, second wind, overgrowth with double adaptive and a defensive rune shard. For your default starter, you want a corrupting pot with a warding trinket, but against heavy bullies, a darn shield plus pot is way too valuable. In regards to your first reset, we also have to make a comment on it. Your typical reset for a cleaver build will consist of a kindle gem and a longsword, whereas the one against mages will feature phage or pickaxe. Did you already guess where this one is going? And if not, we'll gladly break it down for you. Typically, you want black cleaver, defensive boots, icebone gauntlet, dark gauge, anathemus change, and the gargoyle stone plate. Against mages, you'll change it up a bit though. With the alternate set of items I've given you on your first reset, you'll build towards Hullbreaker, Defensive Boots, Icebone Gauntlet, Black Cleaver, Sterics Gauge, and Gargoyle Stoneplate. Your champion is a skirmish demon. If in any scenario you get to suck out the enemy soul, they're in for a lot of trouble. Even if there are multiple enemies ganging up on you, there's always a major risk involved for them, especially post level 6. You can avoid crowd control if you time your ultimate right and literally nuke the enemy team into their fountain. An added bonus to your champion is that it's not really seen that often, so the enemy will have major trouble dealing with your tentacles. What do you think? Are you ready to pick up a few champions off this list and bring them into ranked? Don't worry, it's normal to still feel a little bit shaky as you've been bombarded with a ton of information. If you want some more personalized guidance to help you break down each of the builds above or generally want to improve your League of Legends gameplay, you can check out one of the masterclasses we are offering over at progads.com. Learn to carry as a top laner with General Sniper or look into sneaky jungle gameplay with my gang. Whatever you want, check out the description below and it's just a few clicks away. That concludes today's video. Thank you all for watching and if you like this breakdown and want to see more of this, feel free to tell me in the comment section below. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to see you next time when it's time for another Pro Guides video.